Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at finding the points of intersection of two functions, meaning we're going to determine the values of x for which f of x is equal to g of x, so one function is equal to another function. What does f of x equal g of x actually mean? Well, each is a function and we are looking for the x coordinate or coordinates of the point or points of each intersection. If they are linear, set them equal to each other and isolate the variable. If one is linear and one is quadratic, set them equal to each other and then set the equation to zero. I could go on with all these different strategies, but really it just comes down to what types of functions we're given to see what strategy we actually want to use. So let's look at an example. For what value of x does f of x equal g of x when f of x equals 3x plus 4 and g of x equals negative 2x plus 6? You'll notice here that both f and g are linear, which means we can have at most one point of intersection. So we can only have one value that works. So if we set them equal to each other, we would say 3x plus 4 is equal to negative 2x plus 6. We're going to move all the x's to one side, so I'm going to add 2x to both sides. I'm also going to subtract 4 from both sides. Four. This way I have 3x plus 2x is 5x, plus 4 minus 4 is 0, so we have 5x equals, this is 0, 6 plus negative 4 is 2. Now we can divide both sides by 5, and we figure out that x is equal to 2 fifths. So for what value does x, uh, f of x equal g of x? That would be when x is equal to 2 fifths. If it also wanted you to identify the other coordinate, so hypothetically if we plug in 2 fifths for f, it should be the same value for if we plug in 2 f's for the function g. Just to verify, we'll just do it this one time. If we plug in 2 fifths f of 2 fifths, we would have 3 times 2 fifths plus 4. Whoops, I said, I said 4 and wrote 4. Then we would have, that would be 6 over 5 plus 4. 4 is equivalent to 20 fifths, so this would give us 26 fifths. I'm not going to worry about converting it, we'll just leave it like that because we're just going to compare it with g. g of four, uh, 2 fifths will be negative 2 times 2 fifths plus 6. This would be negative 4 over 5. And then again, I'm just going to think about 6 is equivalent to 30 over 5, just so I have that common denominator. Negative 4 plus 30 is 26 over 5. So that's what should have happened, right? Because they were supposed to equal each other, and they do. But again, the, the final answer here is that x is equal to 2 fifths. That's, that's the actual answer, right? Because it's asking for the x value. Okay, how about here? For what values of x does f of x equal h of x when f of x equals 2x minus 5 and h of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 2? And there could be a couple different things that happen, right? Because f of x equals 2x minus 5, that's a linear equation, and it's going up, so it's going to be something like that. Whereas h... We have a quadratic equation, so it's going to look something like this. So it could be that they meet in two points. It could be that they meet, well, okay, pretend like to pretend like it just hit the bottom there. They just meet at one point, or it could be that the line is down here and it's never going to meet that quadratic at all. So we could have either two solutions, one solution, or no solution at all. Let's see. We have 2x minus 5 is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 2. Since this is a quadratic, I'm going to set it equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract 2x and add 5 to both sides. Subtract 2x and add 5. Then we get 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 7. And now I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that this is factorable, and it is not. It is so close, but it's not, because the target product is positive 7. So either 7 and 1 could both be positive or both be negative, neither of which give us that value of 6. So instead what I'll do is I will do the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2 times a. In this case, a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is 7. So we end up with x is equal to positive 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7, all divided by 2 times 1. We want to be careful, so you'll notice that I put that negative 6 inside parentheses. That's just if you're using your calculator, which you shouldn't need to use your calculator, but if you do, no judgment. 
put it in parentheses because if you don't, you're going to end up with negative 36 and that is not what negative 6 quantity squared is. It is positive 36. So we get 36 minus 28 under the radical, the discriminant, over 2. So then we get x is equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 8 over 2. We're going to simplify the square root of 8. That would end up being 2 radical 2. And now we can simplify all three of these. That would be 3 plus or minus the square root of 2. So this one did have two zeros, or not two zeros, sorry, two points of intersection. One, so we're going to say one is when x is equal to 3 minus radical 2, and the other is when 3, at 3 plus radical 2. So two solutions here. Okay, in this example, both f and g are quadratics, and they're both facing up. So uh, we could see a few different options, but because they're, the parabolas are both opening up, and I know they're opening up because this is positive and this is positive, so if they're both opening up, we could have something like this. We could have something like that. We could, they could just, could they possibly meet once? I suppose they could, right? Because they could just meet, boop, in the middle. Uh, but I think they have to meet at some point. I don't think it's possible that they, they can't meet because even if we don't see it on the screen, it can still be way off the screen. If they're both going up, then they're going to have to meet somewhere. So we're expecting at least one solution here. Let's see what happens when we set them equal to each other. 2x squared minus 8x plus 1 is equal to 2x squared minus 4. I'm going to, let's try to move everything to the left. So I'll subtract 2x squared and add 4. Subtract 2x squared and add 4. Whoops, those cancel. We get negative 8x plus 5 is equal to 0. Interesting, okay. So then we get negative 8x is equal to negative 5. Divide both sides by negative 8, and we get x is equal to positive 5 over positive 8. So they did only meet once. So it would be something like this if we were to possibly, and that would be our final solution, x is equal to 5 eighths. In this last example, we have a radical and a linear. So a radical, the graph of a radical of a square root function looks like this. Eh, maybe a little more curved than that, that looks kind of linear. Whoop. How about like that? So these could have, there could be two solutions, there could be one solution, there could be no solution. Let's see what we have. We have the square root of x plus 5 is equal to x plus 3. Since the radical is by itself, we'll go ahead and square both sides. Remember here, when we square the right-hand side, you square the entire thing. So you square x plus 3. You don't square each term individually. When we do that, we're going to end up with x squared plus 6x plus 9. And now we're going to move everything to the right-hand side. So I'm going to subtract x and subtract 5. Subtract x and subtract 5. We end up with 0 equals x squared plus 5x plus 4. It looks like we have something that's factorable because we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 4 and add up to 5, which would be 4 and 1. So we can say x plus 4 times x plus 1. Set each one equal to 0. If x plus 4 equals 0, then x equals negative 4. If x plus 1 is equal to 0, then x equals negative 1. These are possible solutions. This is a radical, which, uh, well, at least part of it's a radical. I'm going to erase that because it's really gross. Okay, great. Much better. Uh, so we do need to check for extraneous solutions. So we're going to check x equals negative 4 and make sure that it really does work. Um, so you could check it uh, by doing g of negative 4 and h of negative 4 and making sure they equal each other or you can go back here to where we set them equal to each other. It doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to do g of negative 4. This would be negative 4 plus 5, the square root of. That would be the square root of 1, which is 1. When I do h of negative 4, I end up with negative 4 plus 3, which equals negative 1. Now, these were supposed to be equal, and they're not. So negative 4 was an extraneous solution. It gets thrown out. Checking negative 1 g of negative 1 is equal to the square root of negative 1 plus 5. Ooh, I don't know what is going on there. Negative 1 plus 5, which is equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. h of negative 1 is negative 1 plus 3, which equals 2. There, g of negative 1 and h of negative 1 really do equal each other. 
So we keep that solution. There is only one solution and it's x equals negative one. You want to make that very clear that you understand that you know there's only one solution here because that negative four tried to sneak in there but it, it didn't actually work. Thank you for stopping by.